Yeah. U3. Live from the underground. Yo, it's your girl DJ Baby Blue Diamond, and you tune into U3 Underground, Unsigned, and Unknown. And we have a guest, Mr. J. Ross of News from the Tone. What up, what up? What it do? I'm chilling. I'm chilling. How'd you get started into um, just getting into the, again, interest into the music scene? Everybody always asks me this because everybody thinks I just came out of nowhere. So a lot of people don't know. My, like, I was. I was an artist, so I used to do music from about 2006, from 2006 to about 2012, so from when I was in high school, about, well, even eighth grade, probably to a little bit after high school, that's how I got into the, the music game, and then, uh, I used to, I was I was an artist. I used to go by a young Smurf. So then uh, I was actually pursuing a career in music. And then 2012, the manager I had at the time, uh, who's one of my best friends, me and him had parted ways because of my ego. Because I you know I felt that I was the shit, and yeah, he had a difference. So he you know saying we had differences and stuff that we wanted to do. And so me and him bumped heads, and he decided he quick. So when T walked out, I went to a dark place. I didn't want to do music no more. Um, and then I had a kid, and then, you know, started doing the family thing. So music was just out of question. Fast forward, 2016, I uh, got introduced to New Illuminati. You know, J-Boy, IQ, yeah. Pol um, Polo, all those guys. So I became a fan. For those guys so i linked up with them and then i always wanted to do something for san antonio because they were kind of an inspiration for me those are my ogs in a sense like when i consider like the people that really like kind of paved the way for me or yeah. inspired me uh it's gonna be new illuminati so 2018 came um kylie just dropped the american dream album and then i i was like out of nowhere i was like i'm gonna do a review for it and um, I've never done anything like that, uh, you know what I'm saying, or anything like that at all. I did a review, attacked Kylie, and then Kylie liked it. And I started doing more reviews. And then I did one for Sosa. I did one for a Tiny Tune. I did one for uh, Square Business Cliff. He's still a big clip to me. Like, you know, he's yeah. A big clip. <laughs> uh, I did one for, uh, what's his name? Trey, Trey 500. What's, it, what's his name? Trade me on 500? Yeah, you know, Trade 500, yeah. I, I did one for him. Um, and it was crazy because, like, this was before Chris Polk had passed. And I remember I had, like, I've never talked to him ever. And one time that I did talk to him, I sent my message on Instagram. I was like, hey, you know what I'm saying? I do reviews for Arts in the City. Whenever you got some new music, uh, you know, just let me know. And then uh, he was like, all right, cool. And so uh, that was the only time I got to speak with him. So I was looking forward to definitely doing something with him, um, linking up with him. So that's why I had did a tribute video for him and, and stuff like that. And then I had uh, – I did a video for MG Vaughn um, just talking about his music and stuff. Gave him his flowers before, you know what I'm saying, before he passed. Yeah. And, and then um, – so eventually I was like, I need to come up with a name for myself so my i was supposed to just be doing reviews like that was just i was supposed to like everybody reviewing songs on facebook and stuff like that when i was doing it it looked it was taboo at the time like people yeah like, people that's how a lot of people started knowing me from reviews and i was like i need a brand i can represent um so i was thinking of all these names and then there was a similar there was a similar group of guys i'm not gonna mention their name but it was super uh they're very controversial in 2016 um, and I didn't want to drop their name. And so I'm thinking of all these. They're from San Antonio? Uh, one of them is. The other one is, came from Laredo. But they, you probably know. <laughs> you probably know. They didn't last too, they didn't last too long. But they had, they had their own little. I mean, I messed with their movie. I never had any problems with them or anything like that. You know, a block site? I wouldn't even say that. They did, like, interviews and stuff like that. And, oh, okay, okay. Gotcha. They did 
they didn't interview. So this is this is probably before a blog sure came what they are. So I was like, I, I was thinking about these names because I didn't want to call it something basic like San Antonio Music Reviews or yeah. 210, something basic. And so I was thinking about these names. I was like, Views from a Tone. And I thought I was going to get like some some uh, heat for it because Drake, Views from the Six and all oh, that. Oh, yeah, yeah. Uh, I, was, okay. I didn't even think about putting that together, but yeah, okay. <laughs> I didn't, I, but nobody really like this. So, and then um, I just started posting content. And then uh, the first, oh, shoot, okay. What the heck? Okay, sorry. The first, uh, the first post that I did that caused a little bit of attention, I did like a freshman list of different artists. Um, it was Mitch, hold on, let me plug my phone in real quick. Uh, I'm a better. Um, it was, I put, I did like a freshman list because you know how XXL does a freshman play? It used to yeah. Play. I did like a freshman list. So it was like Tiny Tune, I had Mitch James, um, ABM Benji, I had KP the Prophet, uh, Young Shooter, I had MG Vaughn on there, I had Young Stone on there. Uh, it, um, it was some people that I was just fans of. So that caused a little bit of attention. Of course, I got a little bit of heat from it, and, you know, of course. Nobody's ever satisfied with nothing. <laughs> so then from there, I just started posting content. And then I remember I was going to retire out the game. Like, I was like, fuck this. I, I'm done with this. It's, it's what made you want to retire? There was just some oh, stuff going on. It. it was some stuff going on behind the scenes and, uh, you know, from different people that I – I felt I, – I, I guess because – I feel like a lot of people weren't fucking with me at first, so I kind of really got like yeah, discouraged. Yeah, I, I know how know, it is when you first started. They didn't take people weren't taking me serious, and then I, I remember uh, Polo uh, from New Illuminati. He's like, "Hey man, you can't quit." This and that, like you're gonna regret it. And I remember going to IQ's album release party, the mixer. And, uh, yeah, that's the first, that's the first time I seen you. That's the first time I had. Um, that was the first time I met a lot of those people in person from, you know, uh, IQ. Yeah. Uh, Avar, uh, Miss James, E Twist, you, uh, Urban Sweet, you know, them. That's the first time. So I remember, and I remember I was there, and a lot of people were like, Who are you? What do you do? Like, you know, like basically, like, Who the fuck are you? <laughs> and so, fast forward a lot of those people know who I, what I am now so it's crazy like i didn't know nobody so that you know what i'm saying and that's the first time i met that's why i met frank from waves movement who's like a brother to me uh, me and him have a good relationship so, yeah so that's basically how i got into the game you know what i mean so okay okay now that you have done this for some years now like you said you started off doing music and now you have your blog site and you know a lot of artists how is it, how do you feel like the San Antonio music scene as a whole is now that you know a couple artists? Like, do you feel like, do you feel like they're together as one? Do you feel like it's separate? I'm going to say I feel like it's separate because I feel like there's a lot of African-Americans who don't like to promote to the Hispanics. And there's a lot of yeah, there, San Antonio is um, very divided. It's a, it's a big city. You yeah. know what I mean? You know, you have artists from the east side, you know, the northeast. You have artists from, you know, the north side, west side. So a lot of the, and I think our music scene is so segregated, mainly because uh, we're not a predominantly black city. We're Hispanic yeah. city. So even, and I might get some flash, flack for saying this, but I, I think that, that has to do with it. Um, we're not a predominantly Hip hop, you know what I mean, is predominantly the black culture, right? Yes. When you go to the cities like Dallas or Houston or Atlanta or a lot of these, you know what I'm saying, these urban cities, Memphis, the people who are in charge of the radio are predominantly African Americans. 98.5, and this is no shade to them, 98.5 is owned by Univision. Yes. So they're not really a hip hop. Um, you know, I'm saying a station like that. So that's part of it. And then, I mean, we're just segregated. And we don't have a scene in place to where we're one whole. And so a lot of artists think that, oh, well, we need to come together, this and that, for the city to join. 
that's the wrong answer. I am tired of hearing that answer. We need more media outlets. Outlet, excuse me. Yes. To, to shed the light on the the scene here in San Antonio, because if you look at Say Cheese. Say Cheese started off in Dallas, and sh- what Sean Condon did was get all the a- artists from Dallas, you say involved in it, tapped into it, and then they started going other places, and they started they shed the light on Dallas. So that's how I found out about artists like Trap Boy Freddy, Yellow Beezy, yeah. even The Baby. First time I heard of The Baby was on State Cheese. So we need more outlets in the city to really shed the light on the scene. That's why I've been, like, for, for the past two years, I was just posting them with San Antonio artists now. Now, I finally tell myself, like, hey, you got to basically leave this motherfucker. Like, hey, you got to start expanding your brand because you're just showing San Antonio to San Antonio. You have to get in in front of Dallas. You have to get in into Austin. You have to get into to Houston, you know what I'm saying, um, into these different cities. So that's why I've been on Instagram and trying to link up with different bloggers from Austin to Dallas and stuff like that. And I just – and some of them don't even respond to me. They don't take – I'll leave them my number just in case because you never know – they never know when they're going to need it. So that's uh, that's what we need is more media outlets in the city, like plain and simple. Exactly, I agree with that. We do need more media outlets, and um, we do have a couple local stations that do play underground music. But what do you feel like is the disconnect between artists, radio stations, and DJs? Because I always feel like doesn't artists are scared to either talk to radio people or they scared to have that um, relationship with DJs. I think I think the I think it's on both parties uh, responsibility i think the artists have to try to build relationships but see also artists you got to realize when you go to the radio you have to take them a song that they can play you have to take a song that's edited i think exactly. that the i think that the radio needs to be in tune with the artists from the city like i'm gonna say it right now like i'm gonna say it right now and i'm gonna get flack from it. Say it but for example i work in radio right just, just for example, if I like, okay, for example, Yellow Beezy uh, had a song called Traveling a Designer. Yeah. And Dallas, Dallas Radio didn't get behind it at first until other people, he, yeah, he said it. Like, the, the, yeah, Dallas Radio didn't get behind it at first. They were sleeping on it until they started blowing up other places. And then the Dallas city started. So I think that the radio stations have to build relationships with these artists and vice versa artists build relationships now with the djs um i think there's a some djs who do i mean it depends on because you got djs who in the club and you got djs who are not in the club so it just depends on the djs like there's some you know uh dj wild style he spends some local artists i know uh fat dj fat he spends some local artists i know uh vino the builder Whenever he's DJing, um, he plays local artists. And artists, you have to realize that be, you have to take a song that they can jam in the club. Exactly. Not every song is a club song. Yeah. So, I mean, it's just, you know, it's responsibility on all parts. I think the radio station should be tapped into the the the, the city where the artists are doing them. Like, like, I got pissed off. Um, this fake list that came out. Yeah, supposedly oh, yeah. Yeah. Let's talk about that. And one thing that pissed me off, and maybe this is just me being from the Northeast side and, you know, being close to the East side. Stop counting out BJ goddamn off of these lists. Like, I'm, I'm sorry. Like, you know, and, and, and I say that, and I'm not saying that because I'm a fan of the music, but when you look at, he might not does the numbers that Rich and them do, but when you talk about a core fan base, a community behind him, if you come on the northeast and you come on the east side of town, and this is facts, BJ, BJ got them, Scotty and Glizzy are killing it over here. Like everybody knows freaking BJ songs, they know Scotty songs, and they yeah. know Glizzy. So y'all need to stop leaving BJ goddamn out of the conversation when it comes to this music. I'm getting tired of it. And if See, I if I have 
If you I didn't have like to, the fact that he got left off the list, and I didn't like the fact that there was no female artist on the list. Eliza 1K was on there. Well, one. Okay, one. Eliza. Well, the list I saw, I didn't see Eliza. See, there was the list floating around. No, it, no, it was, it was one. It was like a fake XXL top artist. Yeah, I didn't see that one. I saw a couple yeah. of lists floating around, and yeah. the one I saw, I didn't see Eliza. See, there was a that's, couple of lists floating around. That, that's the one that I had seen. That it was like a fake XXL, gotcha. and I went to fix those in, uh, Instagram, and it was a fake list. So the problem I had with that list was why BJ Goddamn was not on that list. Like y'all can't count him out because for the fact that he has people that he has people that show up to Club Blow, shows up to Supremes, yeah. and they go on there and rock out with him, Scotty and Glizzy. Like it's just facts. Like. But there is a positive from the list because since the list came out and then we had Turbo decide to do a diss track, which people start talking about his name, which got other artists to do a diss track against him. So that got other people talking about their names. It's a little positive. I think, like, <laughs> no list should be made anymore unless you're basing it on, on criteria. And I also feel like if you are just an artist, I don't feel like you should be able to make a list. I feel like it has to be someone who's yeah. non-biased and who listens yeah. to all the artists and not just like certain artists. Big, like, like someone like you, someone like the new Illuminati who listens to a lot of artists, not people who just listen to like the select two or three people. On yeah, the that's that's the, the, the problem I have with the list. Like every time there's a list that comes out, it's always a lot of people are naming their they're homeboys that rap. Exactly. Like, people that they know. They're like, no, if you're going to do a San Antonio list, you got, you're going to have to base it off of what artists are doing numbers right now. So if we, if we, want, if we want to make a list based on popularity, who is hot in the city right now, of course it's going to be Rich. Of course it's going to be Hoodlum. Of course it's going to be Blake, Mateo's son, BJ Goddamn, Rex Scott Bands. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Eliza, Eliza 1K, uh, Peso Capone. Um, you know what I'm saying, Yoda. Well, I mean, there's a lot of artists who's kind of, you know what I'm saying, who, who's doing their thing right now, who has a buzz in the city. So we're going to do it like that. But I think that we're not as qualified as the city yet to have a list. I agree. And I'm, I made one list, like, well, last Well, I like that you mentioned that because the artist I interviewed yesterday, he asked him, what are your thoughts on the San Antonio music scene? And he said that we're on next. And that we're so close to Houston, Houston is showing us love, and that we're on next. I mean, That's what I didn't understand. That's why I was like, okay. I I, I mean, I, we're on our way. We just have some, we got to put the, the, you know what I'm saying, the pieces of the puzzle together. I think for sure, like, and I don't even know I'm supposed to be talking about this, but I heard from a close source that Hoodlum has labels looking at him right now. Rich, it, Rich has been in LA meeting with labels right now like i don't did, did someone else get recently signed to something only one that i know is recently that well that is signed is blake but other I than thought that someone else got signed to something you know the, uh, okay i'm gonna call them by their real name the pip boys i was gonna say the pup boys who? The, the pip boys i was gonna call them the pup boys Who's ziggy that? ziggy and the pip boys I thought they got signed or something. Next question. <laughs> <laughs> Let's go back to your blog. Now, what's next for your blog? I know you share, I know you share San Antonio music and you do reviews. I know you have a t-shirt out. So what's next? What can we expect next? Any mixtapes? I know you do your playlist, but any mixtapes coming up albums? Um that is a a, a sketchy thing you know decision to do for the fact that um there's money involved so of course they're gonna want to get paid in it and stuff like that and then if i have to if i do that it's gonna have to be contracts involved because i don't want nobody saying oh well he didn't pay me for this or that so you know so i'm i'm not ready for that part of it the bit that the business part of it yeah that makes sense so it, it, it if i do something like that it's gonna be with a few artists um I mean, I mean, I could do a mixtape. Um, I, I do mixtapes all the time. Just help people make that music and put it all together. Well, it's kind of like your playlist you do. Huh? I said the, the mixtapes I do is kind of like your playlist that you do. 
you know. Yeah, the, a lot of people think the the, the playlists are mixtapes, and I'm like, no, like it doesn't playlist. Like all I'm doing, nobody submit me music or anything like that. I'm just going on Spotify, Apple Music, finding their music and putting them on the playlist and stuff like that, which is way easier. But I think I'm going to just do that because there's so much. Honestly, it's way easier. I don't have to worry about them sending me music. Exactly. Or, or they're going to say, oh, well, if so-and-so is on it, I can't be on it because that's, you know, that has happened. Yeah, so like, a lot of drama. I think once I, like, I get a buzz for the playlist going and stuff like that, I think I'll probably eventually do a mixtape or, or, or something like that. Um, if I do a mixtape, it's going to be, it had to be like, uh, like a four-part series or something like that. Because there's, I don't want to just cater to one audience or cater, you know what I'm saying, or cater to one artist. I want to give a lot of people different chances to to me on it. So um, I'll see, but uh, it's to definitely start doing more interviews. Oh, and uh, once I get me a camera. Uh, nice. Once I get me a camera, I think I am going to, you know, I'll, I'll be able to take off. So that that's just my plan is that. Get a you know get a camera start doing a podcast maybe add uh, some people to the team. Nice. I do everything so. Um, oh, I know how of, it is. <laughs> a lot of people think views from a tone probably is like multiple people. Nah. Views oh, from I tone, know. People think you do use multiple people. Oh, views no. from tone is J Ross like so <laughs> everything that y'all see from the playlist to the posting and all that stuff is all me. By yourself. Okay. Yeah. Are there any artists who, you know, are dropping some albums or mixtapes or singles soon that you just can't wait for them to drop or that you're looking out for? Um, I'm waiting for um, Yoda to drop his project. Um, mm -hmm. That's, gonna be that's one I've been waiting for. Uh, Yoda has his own project coming out, and he has a project with Sosa and Worldwide dropping. Yeah. I'm waiting to hear that. Um, I'm waiting for BJ Goddamn to drop a project because um, he's been dropping a lot of music, like song, singles and stuff like that. Yeah. So, um, um, I think he's built up a good enough buzz to drop a project already. The demand is there. Um, shoot, who else? Mm, I can't. Um, I'm waiting to hear. I don't know when we're gonna get it, but um, I'm. I'm waiting to hear some more unreleased music from Chris Pope, you know. Um, oh, so, someone's going to drop some unreleased music? I know they have some. They have. They've dropped, like, one, I think, one song. Uh, I think, was it this year or last year? They dropped one song. But I, I do know he has, like, a lot of songs. Gotcha. Um, okay. I know uh, I had talked to MG's Vaughn's mom. I know he has some music coming. Um, she um, she wanted me to do something for him, so um, I'm gonna be doing that. Um, I don't know when yet, but um, so I don't know. I mean, um, who? I mean, there's a lot of artists doing music right now that I'm waiting yeah. to hear. Um, uh, Ronnie Cash got some a new project out uh, coming. I think July third or fourth. I'm waiting to hear that. So, I mean, uh, I'm fans of a lot of artists, so I'm just waiting, you know, I mean, who knows, you know. Well, thank you, J. Watts, Views from the Tones, for stopping by you three. Before we let you go, let people know where they can check out your blog. Um, you go on uh, Instagram, uh, Views from the Tone, uh, Views with the Z, Space From, uh, Duh, D-A, uh, Tone, T-O-N-E, 210. Uh, Facebook at views, um, the views from a tone. Um, that's you can find it at right there. Okay. Mainly on Instagram. Main, uh, Instagram is the uh, main one that I use. Oh, before I go, uh, make sure y'all go on Spotify playlist. Welcome to the tone playlist. Uh, part one and part two. I just dropped part two, so that's about 135 songs between both playlists. So it's on Spotify go. and iTunes, right? Uh, no, nah, Spotify and Apple Music. Uh, oh, and Apple Music. So make sure you go check that out on Spotify and Apple Music. It's easier. You, 
I can't. You're not. I don't think they're gonna be able to look it up on um, Apple Music. It's weird because I tried to look it up myself and I couldn't find it. Well, I'll try to find it and I dropped the link below in the description so people can click on it. So go ahead it's and actually, check out both playlists. The the links on um for the Apple Music for part two is on the Instagram page. And then if you go on Spotify, just look up "Welcome to the Tone" on the playlist, and you're gonna be able to find part one and part two. So. You heard it straight from my mouth. Make sure you go ahead and check out his blog. Check out the playlist with some dope artists that you will not want to miss because they are very, very talented. And this should go DJ Baby Blue Diamond, and we are signing out.